All right, let's, let's jump into today's message. We're going to be looking at applying the kingdom of God. We've been talking about understanding the kingdom since the beginning of this school year, but today we're going to kind of take a broader picture and look at how do we apply the principles of the kingdom. It's impossible for me to teach everything there is to teach in the Bible about the kingdom of God. I could spend every single week for the next several years and still not teach it all. So at some point we've got to stop and say, all right, well, what we know how do we apply these things that we already know? So we want to move from principles to practice because it's not enough to simply understand the kingdom of God. We have to know how to apply those principles and what they look like on a daily basis as well. So I will tell you right now, I will not finish today. So we'll have to pick this up next week. There's just too much content and not enough time for me to be able to talk about everything. But this is so important that as we close out this school year and we've been doing all this teaching on the kingdom, how do we wrap all this up and how do we apply it? to our day-to-day lives, so we've got to get this message down, Pat. All right, so here's the first thing. I, I want to say this as often as I can, because even if you hear it 15 times, it still probably hasn't changed your mind yet. But a kingdom is not a religion. It's very important that we get that fact. I, I know I've said it so many times already in this school year, but a kingdom is not a religion. You, you really got to go home and say that a lot of times before you really get it. Maybe not so much for you all, but I, I know especially for a lot of people who were raised under the umbrella of religion, it's difficult for them to grasp the fact that when we talk about the kingdom of God, we're not talking about a religion. It's difficult for people to grasp the fact that Jesus himself never started a religion. People can't swallow that very easily. But even the scripture indicates to us that what Jesus brought to earth was a kingdom, and a kingdom is not a religion. Therefore, when we talk about serving God, honoring God, living for God, we're not talking about adhering to some man-made religions. All religions are man-made, and anything that is man-made will break. I learned that principle the hard way. I used to be a chaplain for a, a funeral home. A chaplain for a funeral home is, is just somebody who speaks at the funeral services whenever the family doesn't have somebody else to be able to do it for them. A lot of times it's families who are not affiliated with a church, and so they need somebody to teach the, a relative to bring the eulogy for their, their loved one that has passed away. And I, I was serving as chaplain for this funeral home, and um, there was this, this guy who was in the middle of giving the final burial rites. And, in the middle of giving these final burial rites, we were all standing around uh, the, the casket and they were getting ready to lower it down. And the minute he started the uh, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, the whole entire casket just dropped into the ground. That's a very awkward situation because it's a very solemn time where you're trying to make sure that the family is comforted, that the family doesn't have a lot of pain. So for something like that to happen, in the middle of a funeral service is extremely awkward. So I sat back and I wanted to see how is this man going to handle this very, very difficult and sensitive situation. And he paused for a moment and he looked out at it at the whole entire family. He said, one thing we have to understand is that anything that is man-made will break. The family laughed about it because it was right on point and it helped ease attention to that moment. Very strange moment, but it's true. Religions are man-made. Any religion you can give me right now, I can trace it all the way back to a specific man. Even the term Christianity was never said by Christ. He never used that word. In fact, when we first encountered that word in the Bible, it was used as a derogatory term to refer to people who followed Christ. It was actually meant to be a bad thing. Over time, and if you look back through church history, we just kind of adopted it as our own title. But Jesus never started Christianity. That was a title that people adopted over time to label people who follow Christ. Christ brought a kingdom. And when you look at the, the scriptures carefully, you find that this is all that Jesus ever talked about. So what is a kingdom then? A kingdom is a king impacting a territory with his will, his purpose, and his intentions through the influence of his citizens. Memorize that, because you know what it's not, but you also have to know what it is. And the reason why that definition is so important is because it gives us an indication of what our priority should be 
It helps us to understand how God wants us to apply his word to our lives, and it helps us to make sure that we're carrying out the mandate of what God has given for mankind here on earth. So it's a completely different thing. So when, people, when you meet people out there in the world, as you go off into the world and you go off to college, and they say, man, I'm not a religious person. Good. But do you have the kingdom? And actually, it's easier to help people to know God by explaining the kingdom than it is to religion. Re religion oftentimes is so offensive and so sensitive that it will immediately throw people off. But when you expose people to the kingdom of God first, it gives them an opportunity to understand that this whole thing is not really what I thought it was. It's mind-changing and it's mind-shifting when we truly understand the kingdom of God. So that's what a, a kingdom really and truly is. But applying the principles of the kingdom, applying the principles of the kingdom begins with an adequate understanding of God's original plan. You can't apply the kingdom of God to your life. You can't apply its principles unless you understand God's original plan to begin with. And we can understand that plan. The Bible gives, the Bible tells us that no man knows the, the spirit of a man, uh, the mind of a man, except the spirit of a man. And then it tells us that we have been given the spirit of Christ. Since we have the spirit of God living inside of us, we are able to understand the mind of God. We can understand God's original plan, his intentions, and his purposes, and we can fulfill that with our lives. So we need to make sure that we understand God's original plan. Here's the, the first verse I want to share with you. It's actually in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible makes this very simple but profound statement. It says, then God said, this is after he had created the earth, and we've seen the, the first six days of creation, or rather the first five days of creation. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. That's a powerful statement. Because all of purpose of mankind is tucked away in that one verse. It's us, is God telling us what his actual intentions were for his full creation. And it tells us that we have a place in rulership on earth with God's kingdom. You don't see religions dominating. Kingdoms dominate. It was God's plan from the very beginning to expand his spiritual kingdom into an earthly world. And that part had to sink in because if that was God's original plan and we are a part of a kingdom, then it's our role and our responsibility to make sure that we carry out the will, the intentions, the purpose, and the plans of that king. But if we can't apply the kingdom, if we can't apply the principles that we learn, if we can't live out these concepts, then we can't fulfill the will, the intention, the purpose, and the plans of our king. So we see from the very beginning that it was always God's plan and always God's intention to rule his kingdom on the earth through you. God designed you for leadership. God designed you to operate on earth effectively. God designed you to carry out his purposes and his plans. He designed you to fulfill it. Watch this. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, look at what the Bible says. You know, Jesus is one of the most misunderstood people on earth. We quote this scripture around Christmas all the time, but we fail to really grasp its full meaning. It says, for to us a child is born, and it's prophesying about Jesus Christ. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the what? Government shall be upon his shoulder. Of the increase of his what? Government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his what? Kingdom. So when the prophet Isaiah prophesied about the birth of Jesus Christ, he pointed Jesus back to God's original purpose, which was to fulfill his kingdom on earth as it already is in heaven. Jesus never brought a religion. The Bible itself tells us that Jesus came to establish his father's earthly kingdom. That was his intention from the beginning. So I say that because I need you to understand why I talk so much about the kingdom of God. Listen, my time here on earth is much shorter than yours, hopefully. 
And so I have to make sure that when I stand before my God that I've gotten this thing right. So one of the reasons why I spend so much time intentionally focusing on the kingdom of God, number one is because I know that this is what God wants me to talk about. I know that this is what God wants me to reveal. I know that this is what God wants me to help make sure that people understand. So I spend all of my time studying, understanding, teaching, and applying the kingdom of God. That's nothing on earth more important to me than fulfilling that purpose and that plan. It's critical to my life. I got to make sure I get that. So to make sure I don't get any of that stuff left out, this is what I choose to focus on. I could get up here and teach you a whole lot of stuff. There are a lot of different things I could talk about. But I got to make sure I fulfill his plan for my life. And so I use the medium, and I use the resources, and I use the time that God has given me to do that because I got to make sure I get this thing right. There's nothing on earth more important than God's kingdom. We have to make sure we get this. This is the, this is the place where salvation and all this other stuff come into place. This, it, it does no good for you to be saved if you don't know what you were saved for and you don't know who you were saved to. It's not enough. A lot of people get saved because they're afraid of hell. Now, that may be an okay starting point, but we can't stay in that place. We have to make sure we understand that the reason why we were saved was because we were once exiled from the kingdom of God because of the sin nature of man. And it took Christ coming to pay the price for that sin that allows us access back into the kingdom of God so that we can have dominion on earth the way God originally designed for us too. So we've got to get that concept down packed. That's how God made us, and that's what he created us for. So Jesus always had the intention of coming and establishing the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, remember John the Baptist? The Bible describes John the Baptist as being the forerunner of Christ. It says that he was the one that would be preaching in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. Isaiah prophesied about John the Baptist too. You know, that's a very kingdom concept because when you look at a kingdom, anytime a king is going to visit one of his territories, they always send messengers of head of that king. And the messenger is responsible for going into all the places in the whole entire territory and telling people what to do in order to prepare for the king's arrival. I mean, I'm not making this up. This is literally how kings function and operate. They'll go to a city or they'll go to a territory that belongs to the king and they'll say, I want you to paint all of these buildings. I want you to repave all of these streets. I want you to redo all of this territory over here. I want you to plant flowers over here. I want you to build a park over here. They, they go to these territories and literally tell people what to do in order to prepare for the coming king. John the Baptist was just like that. And this is what the Bible said about him. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, it says, In those days... John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now, he was going before Christ, and look at what it says about his message. It's, he was saying, repent. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when John prepared the way for Jesus, he was preparing the way for the kingdom of heaven. Then when you look at what Jesus taught, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, John the Baptist had been put in jail. He would soon be beheaded because of his message. And look at what the Bible says about Jesus. From that time, Jesus began to preach. And look at what Jesus preached. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the prophets all prophesied about the kingdom. And then the forerunner of Christ came, and he talked about the kingdom. And then Jesus himself came, and he talked about the kingdom. If the kingdom... It's being talked about by all these people. That tells us that this must be very important to God himself. And if something is important to God, it should also be important to us. Am I right? Then look at when Jesus actually first began to teach his ministry. If that wasn't enough evidence, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And he went through all Galilee, a whole entire region, it says, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. The miracles followed the message. 
But everywhere he went, Jesus taught concerning the kingdom of God. So why do I talk about the kingdom so much? Because it's what Jesus talked about. Why do I only teach on the kingdom? Because it was the only thing that Jesus ever talked about. Even when people came to him with questions and they asked him stuff, Jesus will always turn it around and he will answer their question from a kingdom perspective. It's all about the kingdom. And we have to make sure that we get that down pat. Then look at this. this. This came out of the mouth of Jesus himself. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. It says, but he said to them, these were people who wanted Jesus to stay in a specific city with them. They were begging Jesus to stay there. He had done miracles in that place, and they didn't want him to leave. And Jesus said this, but he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well. Why? For I was sent for this purpose. So Jesus himself, out of his own mouth, declared that his whole purpose for coming to earth was to teach and establish the kingdom of God here. If that was important to Jesus, it must be important for us. Am I making a little bit of sense? Then I want to show you something else. Let's say that you only had, I don't know, one day to live. If you had one day left to live on earth, and you could do anything you wanted to do, you would, probably, you would probably do the stuff that is most important to you, am I right? Whatever is most important to you, you're gonna spend that last day of your life doing that. Am, am I right or is that something else you all would do? You're gonna do what's most important to you, right? Whether it's going and, and, and jumping out of a helicopter, going skiing, whatever, something extreme or something simple. Whatever it is, you're going to do what you believe is most important to you. Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. And when he came back alive, the Bible indicates to us that he spent a period of 40 days revealing himself to people on earth. Jesus knew his time was short. And look at what the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 3 tells us. It says, he presented himself alive to them, talking about his disciples, after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So not only did Jesus start out talking about the kingdom, not only did he teach the kingdom his whole entire ministry, but when Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected, came back alive, guess what he still did? He taught the kingdom. Do you get now that the kingdom is important? Have I established that fact already? The kingdom of God is extremely important. We've got to get this message. There are a lot of different gospels that are out there. You may run into people who are teaching prosperity gospel. Jesus never taught prosperity gospel because if you have the kingdom, you will prosper. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The, the thing is, is that in the kingdom of God, prosperity is not measured by the size of your bank account. In the kingdom of God, your prosperity is measured by how much you have fulfilled the will and the plan of God. It's measured by your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding. It's measured by how well you live your life. That's prosperity in the kingdom not the size of your bank account, not the type of car that you drive. Those things are not prosperous in the kingdom of God because when you die, none of that stuff goes with you. When you leave this earth, you can't take your bank with you. And so we have to make sure that we get this message. So here's a point that I want to make. Living life in the kingdom of God is living a life of priority. It's all about priority. It's all about priority. We have to have the right priorities. When we can live our life with the right priority, it ensures that we're doing the right things for the right people at the right time. But our priorities have to be in order. And now there are so many things that you're faced with every day that you could make a priority. 
But Jesus came and he made that simple too. In, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, again, he, he only gave us two things to focus on. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God. And you only have two things to focus on. Two, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's it. Out of all the stuff that could complicate your life, there are only two things that are going to make an eternal difference. The kingdom of God and your relationship with that king, which is another term for righteousness. Only two things are going to make a difference. That's it. You can sit here right now and you can have a lot of stuff worrying you, weighing you down, bothering you, concerning you. But only two of those things have an eternal purpose. And that's understanding the kingdom of God and how to maintain your relationship with him. So having the right priorities, putting the first things first, are what, is what ensures that we're able to adequately fulfill and apply the word of God in our lives. I want to share some more with you on that next week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity we have to share in and to know your kingdom, to be a part of your plan, to fulfill your purpose for our lives. And Father, over the next couple of weeks as we finish out this school year, I pray that you would give us ears that hear, that you would give us eyes that see, that you would give us hearts that comprehend. Help us, Father, to know with all the saints, the length, the width, the height, and the depth of your love. Let us fulfill your plan and let our lives glorify you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.